Adventureland is the largest amusement park in Iowa. This park currently is owned by Palace Entertainment and recently celebrated its 50th anniversary. Over the years, they have accumulated a strong ride lineup with seven different roller coasters and some solid flat rides. In this video, I will rank the park's top 15 rides and attractions. Before starting the list, I need to note two things. One, I will not be including any of the water slides at the Adventure Bay Water Park. This is included with admission, but I have spent all my time on the dry side, so I cannot accurately rank these. The water park is a small but well-rounded slide lineup with some tube slides, speed slides, and a mat racing slide. Two, I will be giving honorable mentions to some defunct attractions. My first visit took place in 2019 before Palace took over. Since then, they have unfortunately removed a handful of rides, which has been a trend across the chain, but they have added some new stuff at least. Starting off the list at number 15 is the A-Train. This is a classic train ride. I love how you board directly above the park entrance, much like Disneyland. You get views of all the current attractions on the left side of the park, plus the remains of the old Rapids ride. Then the far turnaround is a fun little tunnel. Number 14, Circus Balloons. This is a small spinning balloon ride from Zamperla. The tubs are exceedingly easy to spin, so this can become the park's most dizzying ride. Then the continuous bobbing motion adds some variety by varying your rotational speed throughout. Number 13, Sawmill Splash. This is a Whitewater West spinning raft ride. It essentially is a water slide in an inflatable circular dinghy boat. The raft spins at a decent clip for much of the experience. Then it culminates in a fun double down. While the final splash does not get you too wet, your feet can get soaked. The bottom of the raft tends to fill with water, so you may want to keep your feet elevated in the air. Number 12, Flying Viking. This is a Zamperla family coaster intertwined with the log flume. This creates some cool visuals and interactions. This layout is mostly smooth, and it has a pinch of power at points. The first drop has some whip in the back, and then the two helixes have okay positive Gs. Number 11, G-Force. This is a Huss break dance. This one is interestingly placed inside the park's arcade. The darker setting and flashing lights of the adjacent games enhance the disorientation. This one is a flat platform unlike some versions, and the cycle is on the shorter side, but there are two high-speed pulses at the start and end of the experience that offer some solid spins and whip. Number 10, Phoenix. This is a Mauer SC2000 spinning coaster. It's a familiar layout with a great first drop and some fun twists. However, this one has two cons relative to the others. One, multiple mid-course brake runs trim the cars quite harshly. Two, this one does not spin nearly as much, even with an off-balanced vehicle. Still, the rotation allows you to take some elements in weird orientations. Number 9, Draken Falls. This is a Zamperla log flume intertwined with Flying Viking. While it does not have much landscaping at this time, you do have the fun visuals of the coaster overhead, and you also pass a series of motivational signs. Then there are two drops. The initial double down is a smidge of weightlessness, then the final drop is taller, and it offers a little pop of air in the back. Then this ride will get everything but your shoes very wet, which is a good thing on a hot day. Number 8, Storm Chaser. This is a Mondial Windseeker. It is the park's tallest ride at 260 feet, or 79 meters in height. While the spinning is fairly gentle, the views more than compensate. You get a beautiful aerial view of the park. In the distance, you can see Des Moines. Then you can see endless fields in each direction. Sure, other versions offer better sight lines, but I still like what you see atop this one. Number 7. Space Shot. This is an SNS drop tower. The launch sounds a bit off compared to the other installations, so takeoff 
is a bit more predictable, which is a good thing. The launch has okay power, then you rocket atop a 200 foot or 61 meter tall tower. You can see for miles in each direction, and you also get some nice floater air time up there as well. I prefer the versions that drop you from the top, but this is one of the better space shots at least. Up next would have been the Sky Ride. This was the park's best observation ride. It not only was an efficient way to cross the park, but it offered some fantastic views of Monster. The ride quite literally pierced through that coaster's inversions. It was an absolute treat seeing that coaster cycling all around you. Number 6. Underground. This is the world's only indoor wooden roller coaster. While this is a unique claim, this really is more of a dark ride. However, the ride system presents two issues. One, it is extremely loud. Two, you pass the scenes a bit faster than I would like. Those scenes are otherwise solid, especially because it was just refreshed for the 2024 season. You have all sorts of miners throughout the attraction, and the coaster is a nice little pre-show before you board as a bonus. Number 5. Tornado. This is a William Cobb designed wooden roller coaster. It is not the best paced ride as every hill in the outward leg seems 10 to 15 feet too tall, but the ride has its moments. Some of the initial drops offer decent floater air time in the back. Then the return run offers some negative G's for those in front. None of the air time is super strong, but it is maximized by the freeing bus bar restraints. Then despite being an out and back design, the layout curves 90 degrees, which allows for some lateral kinks along the way. Just avoid a wheel seat, because a few of the valleys are on the bumpier side. Up next would have been Falling Star. This was a chance flying carpet. This ran a lengthy cycle, and it had good top speed, which resulted in a pinch of airtime over the top, and some very strong laterals. You would repeatedly be pinned against your riding buddy. Number 4. Sidewinder. This is the park's best flat ride. It is a Moser Frisbee similar to Fandango at Knobles, if you've experienced that ride. This flat offers several max swings, and each one offers solid floater air time. Then this is paired with respectable positive G's on the downswings. Add in a satisfying cycle length, and this rise a winner. Number 3. Outlaw. This is a CCI wood coaster, but it feels more like a small-scale GCI creation, which makes sense given the lead designer went on to co-found that company. This coaster is a handful of turns with nice laterals, it also has a few decent pops of airtime, and as with Tornado, these are also maximized with the buzz bar restraints. Then the ride is reasonably smooth, which is impressive for a twister layout utilizing PTC trains. Up next would have been Dragon. This was a Hopkins looping coaster. I heard it was horrifically rough, and the pre-lift certainly was. The train violently shook through this part but the rest of the coaster was actually smooth for me, allowing me to appreciate it. The back-to-back -back vertical loops were the highlight. They were super forceful, as was the following helix. Then if you sat up front, there was a pop of airtime into the brakes as a bonus. Number 2. Dragon Slayer. This is easily the best SNS free spin in North America. While this is one of the smaller models, the ride flips far faster and more frequently than the other installations by smartly using magnets. This one offers both a wild and a mild side, but make no mistake, that mild side is still wilder than any other free spin in the country. Both sides are capable of providing 8-10 to 10 flips. The wild side was just more consistent for me. And there are a few points where you'll rapidly perform 4-5 to five flips in a row, it feels completely out of control at these points. And coming in, number one is Monster. This Gerslauer Infinity Coaster is the premier ride not just at Adventureland, but the entire state. This ride starts off with an incredible beyond vertical first drop, loaded with ejector airtime. 
then the train navigates a series of funky turns and inversions. They are deliberately tall, so the train stalls out atop many of them, resulting in some wild hang time and laterals. You spend a lot of this ride mercilessly dangling against your restraint or bent over the side of the train. Take the finale, which cleverly uses a trim brake to advantageously slow the train down to supercharge the hang time. And unlike a lot of Gerslauer's, this coaster is immaculately smooth. There is a brief lull in the center of the ride when two elements are merely okay, but this ride is an extremely strong start and finish. And this ride's flashy LED lighting package is simply incredible, and it's an attraction in itself. If you want more in-depth thoughts about Monster, or any of the park's top 5 roller coasters, I have separate reviews already published to the channel. Those are my 15 favorite rides at Adventureland in Iowa. What are your favorite rides at this park, or thoughts on any of the attractions I mentioned? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this countdown, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you consider subscribing, because there will be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.